Hi, this is Julian for Production Expert, and today I want to talk about resetting things in Pro Tools. Just some handy ways of resetting parameters that you might change in Pro Tools, just because regardless of your level of experience, experimentation is always a good thing, but I do think that part of understanding how to use the tools isn't just in, in understanding how to change them, but also how to get back to where you were, because otherwise it can make people reluctant to experiment. So with that in mind, um, here we go. I mean, the first thing I'm going to say is just the reset that I'm sure most people already know. But if you need to just quickly reset something to its default value, pretty much everything, holding Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC will get you there. For example, down here, uh, here I've got a, a volume that I can reset. Option click, back to zero. Same goes for the pan. Option click, back to zero. I can do the same on the control itself. And that works pretty much everywhere. That's incredibly handy. And if you weren't aware of that, then, you know, I mean, there we go. Resets abundant already. Getting into sort of slightly more behind the scenes stuff, Pro Tools really customizable and you can set up preferences in all sorts of ways. The, the preferences window has been improved markedly by the addition of uh, this search window, which really helps you get to where you're going. I know that I, when I open this window, sometimes find myself clicking around on the tabs, just trying to find a thing that I know perfectly well is in there, but I can't quite remember where. If we're talking about resetting preferences, you can do it manually. There are detailed instructions online for both Mac and for PC in where to go in the library folder preferences and go in and manually deleting plist files on your computer. That will get you there. Um, if you're doing this stuff, if you set them up in a particular way, backing up is always useful. But if you're experimenting and you, things are on default anyway, maybe it's not something you need to concern yourself with. But... I'm not going to show you how to do that. I looked it up. I couldn't remember how to do it because I haven't done it for years. Instead, if you're using Mac or PC, use one of the apps that look after this stuff for you automatically. They're just so convenient. Mac users, there's a free one. Pete Gates' uh, Pro Tools Preferences app is fantastic. Just uh, look it up. There's a link in the article. Or if you're on PC, there's a paid version, but it's extremely inexpensive. I think it's like about $5 or something, uh, something called Trasher. But uh, that's the way I've done it for years. And I suggest you do the same thing. It's much, much better. And it offers some additional functionality on top. However, while we're in this uh, prefs window, in the metering tab, we've got this advanced meter types. And you can set up very specifically what you want. Something that's quite handy is to be able to set the, the color breaks to somewhere that, that's relevant to, to what you're doing, particularly if you're working to uh, lab specs or something like that. And it can, it can be helpful. But if you're playing with this stuff, it can be useful to get back quickly. There is a reset button there, which is worth being aware of. Also, over here, we get all these don't show dialogue settings, and very often we, we make them all go away. Occasionally, they're useful. If you want them back, hit reset, and you'll get them all back again. If we're talking about windows in Pro Tools that can get complicated, uh, increasingly, especially with immersive workflows and stuff, uh, we find ourselves in the I.O. window quite a lot. And uh, if you need to just clear out what's going on there, if you've inherited a session, this one, for example, I've inherited, there's loads of stuff going on in here. And I think uh, rather than adapt what's already there so that I really know what's going on in this session, I might want to actually just reset everything. A lot of it's good, but uh, a lot of it's um, I might want to kind of set up in a way that suits me. Just hit default and it'll reset tab by tab. There's all these different tabs in here. And uh, if you hit option while doing that, you'll reset everything. So, I mean, there we are. That's also a really great way of sorting out uh, the age-old issue of no sound in Pro Tools. Very often it's because of routing stuff. If you're not particularly needing to keep what's already there, then just, just default it. Option, click, default, and uh, you'll probably get what you need back, particularly in this bus window where we set up these monitoring paths. One of the most useful shortcuts you can know in Pro Tools when you start using automation, is knowing about uh, command and control or start control on a, on a PC uh, and then clicking on the parameter you wish to view the automation for. It's got its own one, but say I want to see pan. There we go. I mean, I'm into pan. I can do that for pretty much anything. I can do that for automation parameters, uh, anything that can be automated. You can view the automation playlist very quickly just by clicking on the relevant control. But how do you get back to waveform view? Uh, the way you do that is you hold down the same modifiers, command and control, and to, to reset back to waveform view, just uh, click on the name of the track and you're straight back there. Waveform zoom zooms in the waveform itself 
but doesn't change anything else. It just makes the waveform bigger so you can view low-level stuff. And the way you do it is you hold down Option and Shift or Alt and Shift on a PC, and then just, I mean, I'm going to use my scroll wheel down and up and whatever equivalent to a scroll wheel you have on your particular pointing device, just do that. And you can end up with gigantic things like this, which are great for seeing low-level stuff. But how do you get back again to where you started? You can zoom it back out again, but where did you start? It can be quite useful to get back to the default that you're used to. The way you do that is you hold Control, Option, and Command, or Start, Control, and Alt on a PC, and then hit Square Brackets, Open Square Brackets, will get you back to the default. So that's resetting waveform zoom. Here's a useful, if, if slightly backwards example, which is using the uh, default setting in a plugin. When you instantiate a plugin, you'll get the factory default. And uh, that's what happens, and most people are perfectly used to it. But you, you can set it to something else, which is kind of <laughs> doing the same thing in reverse. Here, if I just come over here and I go uh, expand, because this is an example where I do this all the time. If I open my expand, rather than getting the default, what's well, called beneath the waves, big ponderous, evolving pad sound, I've got an electric piano instead, because to be honest, it's kind of more useful more of the time. And I set that up by changing my default up here. In the settings preferences, set plugin default to factory setting or user setting. I've set it to a user setting here. And setting my user default, I just create a patch, set that as user default, and then save my... Uh, plug in default to user setting, and I get this instead of the default. But if I want to go back to factory setting, I just go on here, and there we go. And then if I were to re-instantiate this plugin, I've now opened with Beneath the Waves, that familiar, if not particularly useful, pad sound. Lastly, somewhere that you really ought to be experimenting is in keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts are incredibly useful, but you don't have to use the default Pro Tools shortcuts anymore if you don't want to. And also, you can create shortcuts for some things that don't have shortcuts. For example, the uh, the color palette is, uh, is a window that doesn't have a default shortcut set to it. So you could set one up if you wanted to. The way you do that is go into Setup, Keyboard Shortcuts, for which obviously there's a keyboard shortcut. And you can set up custom keyboard shortcuts. I've got a couple arranged already down here, and you get a nice big visible warning that something like that's going on. This is really useful if you're going on to a new system that, that, that isn't your regular system, and you can reset things so that you'll be able to get around quickly. And the way you do it, and it's kind of obvious once you know it's there, but <laughs> reset all, and just click that, and then you'll get back to your regular default keyboard shortcuts, which uh, which are incredibly useful things to have, but also anything you can change in Pro Tools. You want to know how to change it back, and that's been the point of this video. I hope there's been something useful for you in here. That was some ways that you can reset stuff in Pro Tools.